Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this more unscheduled than normal little video, uh, you'll be thinking, what's he doing out at this time? It's because there's lots to talk about. So I'd like to discuss what appears to be the insane decision by President Macron to hold snap elections in France as a result of gains made by National Rally. Is it actually insane or is there some strategy here? So first of all, what's really happened in the European elections, because in the UK at any rate, I don't know how it's been reported all over Europe, everyone is losing their minds. The fascists think there's this tidal wave of populism sweeping Europe, hurrah, and the anti-fascists are thinking, first European elections where we don't take part and you've literally let the Nazis in. But this isn't what's happened. Groups that you would describe as far right have made gains, and those gains are not nothing, but they haven't won any balance of power. In fact, nowhere near. They are going to make up about 30% of the European Parliament. So in a sense, the equivalent of the far right winning just under 200 seats in our Westminster general election. Not great, not at all great, but it's not going to form a government or be able to pass legislation. In fact, it's even weaker than that, because even this 30% of seats are split into several different factions which don't really get on with each other. So although we can look at it and go, oh, 30% of the European Parliament is going to be representing the far right, they, they don't work well. A bit like the factions within the far right in the UK. They may share a lot of common cause, but like a lot of extremists on whichever side, they tend to have their purity tests and they treat everyone not inside their own tribe with deep mistrust. However, although the balance of power in the European Parliament hasn't really changed, there are some localised concerns. France's National Rally Party won about a third of the French votes, more than the Socialists and Macron's posse combined. So Macron has now called snap parliamentary elections. Understandably, French political leaders not aligned with the fascists or Macron have attacked the decision, although they probably should not have done so publicly. It's not a good look for politicians to give the impression that they're not up for an election makes it appear that they don't think the public would back them. But it sounds mad, doesn't it? A party of pro-Putin, anti-EU extremists have made gains in European elections and you're now giving them the chance to ride this momentum into a national election. Except it may not be as mad as it seems. I'm not saying it's a good decision, by the way. I don't know enough of the detail of French politics to be qualified to make an accurate risk-reward calculation. But what I can see is there is a risk-reward calculation. I can see that although people have described this decision by Macron as gambling, not making the decision was also gambling. So what does the calculation appear to be? Well, for context, remember, Macron doesn't hold the balance of power in the French parliament anyway. He's been getting by based on the fact that the left wing won't work with Le Pen, for obvious reasons. And so there's no real opposition to most of Macron's policy decisions, even though there's no majority support for it either. So one potential reward is that Macron gains his power back. Again, don't know how likely that would be, but that's one of the possibilities. There is an outcome whereby the French people see this election as a wake-up call, and that previously apathetic voters who haven't really been turning out to the elections recently, didn't turn out to these European elections, didn't turn out to the previous national elections, suddenly go, actually, yeah, there's a thing to do here. You would certainly hope so, because the turnout for the 2022 elections was pants. And this makes sense. Ask yourselves why, like in the UK, we elected so many UKIP and then Brexit party MEPs. Yes, yes, proportional representation, we're always going to get some, but that didn't count for the large numbers that, that you know, should have been the case. It's because most voters didn't really take the European election seriously. It's like, oh, we don't mind these idiots being in the European Parliament because we don't even know what the European Parliament does. It's a different matter when you're thinking, ah, but we don't really want them in Westminster. Quite a lot of people, you know, they don't even know um, that European elections were happening until the card came through the door in this country. And I can't imagine it's way better in France. So it became an election where those with extreme attitudes on Europe had a disproportionate say. Or even if, you know, we're not just talking about extreme voters, they, they use the European elections to, instead of like using their vote for all sort of whole range of policies, just use it as a sort of confidence vote in Europe or not 
which still means, remember, that the majority, even in France, have said, yeah, we want pro-European parties. But you take 2019 as an obvious example in the UK. The UK had 73 seats up for grabs in the days when we had seats. And the Brexit party won 29 of them. This was achieved with just over 30% of the vote. Yet in the general election of the same year, they won just 2% of the vote and no seats. I mean, yes, they stood candidates down in almost half the seats. But even if we suppose, if they'd stood everywhere, that they could have achieved maybe 5% nationally, which is a bit of a stretch. But let's just say, you know, that's a far cry from the 30% they won just a few months before in the European elections. Now, yes, national rally do better in France than the Brexit party could ever have done in the UK. They're more established in one form or other. They won about 18% of the vote in the legislative elections of 2022. But they always do better in the EU elections. It's not just about this year. They always do better in the EU elections than national elections. Because people treat their national elections more seriously than European elections. I remember years ago when the French presidential election was between Jacques Chirac and Le Pen Senior. Now, if you were a socialist voter, what on earth were you supposed to do with your vote there? And yet the choice was obvious. Vote for the crook, not the Nazi, was the rallying cry for the left. And Macron is calculating that the same will sort of apply, I suspect. That the French people realise that there is a weighty decision to be made. After all, this is a snap election. It's really early. How can voters not realise that this shit is getting real? And they will know that this election has been called as a rallying cry against fascism. You know, I've, I've likened this to Macron playing the Samuel L. Jackson character in Pulp Fiction. You know, it's like he's saying to his public, vote for the Nazis again. I dare you. I double dare you. Hoping, maybe even expecting that when the vo voters turn up this time, they will not want the fascists to take control of the parliament. Particularly like when it's going to be just before the Olympics are held in France. And if they do... If the gamble fails, then it could be argued that Macron is hoping, indeed it has been argued, that Macron is hoping this gives the French people an opportunity to see what they're like in power before the crucial presidential election still three years away. Whereas if Macron just left it, there might be a risk that the far right could build on their success this weekend, build up momentum and make a serious push nationally in the French elections, you know, if they took place as normal. So, yes, this is a gamble by Macron. And as I say, I don't know whether it's a reckless gamble or not, because um, it was also a gamble to do nothing. Macron is trying to appeal to his people not to let National Rally claim that they speak for the people, not to give them three years claiming that they're building up this support base. He's certainly giving them the chance to show up and take a stand. Of course, like I said, my understanding of French politics isn't detailed enough to be able to say what the, the likelihood of various outcomes is. I don't know whether it's a good move or not. I don't know what the probability of these outcomes are, but I can appreciate the strategy, I think. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.